everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. Last week, I posted a picture on Instagram of my 13-year-old daughter working through her Apologia Writers in Residence curriculum. And that photo brought a flurry of comments and questions from people who just want to know more about it. So I decided that the best course of action to take would be for me to make a video about it for you. Um, we are not all the way through it, far from it. We are still working on it. We have only been doing it maybe about six weeks or so. Um, but I do have some definite thoughts on it that I'm gonna share with you. And I also want to just give you a glimpse onto what's inside of it so that you can get a better idea of what it's all about. So let's get started. Okay, so this is Writers in Residence. Um, it's a writing curriculum by Apologia. And I was actually blessed enough to get this for free. Um, all I had to do was just write an honest review of it, or I'm actually reviewing it in video now, but this was not required of me. I'm just showing this to you because there are so many people who ask me about it. Now, as you can see, we are doing volume two, Journeyman. Now, we've never done volume one. And the reason that I was comfortable with just starting out with volume two is because this curriculum was actually written with around a fourth through eighth grade level in mind. And the daughter who is actually doing this is 13 going on 14. So I was confident that she knew enough about the writing process in order to just start off right in volume two. So let's just take a look at the inside of this. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go through the entire thing because it is a meaty curriculum, okay? It really, there's so much in here. So I'm just going to go over some key things with you. So the first unit is Into the Wild. And that right there I knew was going to grab my daughter's attention because the very first writing assignment that there is was about she was supposed to, well, she is supposed to choose an animal from our state, which is Pennsylvania, and she's going to write a report on that. And it really shows them step by step how to go through that. And this actually, it was the perfect way to transition my daughter into a curriculum because we don't usually use writing curriculums. Um, I wanted her to do it because I knew that this was going to help her know how to do the sorts of writing that they expect in college. Um, and this actually does show how to do MLA formatting, which is what they use in a lot of college. And I'm just paging through here right now and I'm going to go through it a little bit more in, in a bit. But anyway, I just, I, I wanted I wanted her to learn how to do things such as um, citations. That's not something that we do in notebooking. Um, I wanted her, to, again, to do the MLA formatting because I know that the colleges use the, the APA and the MLA formatting. So this curriculum right here is actually showing them how to do the MLA formatting. It, it teaches the kids how to find reputable websites, which I really like because I am actually learning a lot about this. There is a section, um, let me see if I can see it, that it actually shows the kids the difference between like .com, um, .org, um, now .gov, you know, we, we know that that's, you know, a government website. But I, I never really knew what the difference was between like .com, .net, .gov, .org, .edu. No, I knew that was education. But it actually goes into this and is saying why the websites, why if you look at those, that can actually help you to determine um, if it's going to be reliable or not. And I that's something that I honestly, I'm going to admit, I did not know that. So I like that. And it also was, was just explaining how you have to look at more than one website. You don't want to get all of your information from one website, which we do know that. But it was explaining how even when it comes to animals in Pennsylvania, you might get one reputable source that has one list. And then you might get another reputable source that has a list that is a little bit different. So it was just going over things like that and about how it's important to make sure that an animal is chosen that is on both lists, you know, to, to make sure that it is something that is definitely, you know, unquestionably found in Pennsylvania. So anyway, let's just go back a little bit. So again, I just thought that was perfect for her to get started on animals because she's just an animal lover. So um, as you can see, this is a Christian curriculum. And then it just actually spotlights the different Christian writers that are used as examples throughout the units here. 
And I will say that volume one, from, from what I've seen in this book, is, is more um, like it, it teaches the nouns and the predicates, and it teaches all of those basic writing skills. And it does go a little bit more deeply into, into that in this curriculum. But volume one really is a good place to start, you know, if you have, you know, an elementary child doing, doing the writers in residence curriculum. But again, I was perfectly comfortable with my daughter starting right here because she is 13. So anyway, as you can see, it gives you a suggested daily schedule. And I'm just going to add here that there is a, a teacher's manual. And that also has the same suggested schedule in there. Um, and this suggested schedule, it just, it just tells you, you know, which modules to do each day. And it's actually based on a 32-week school year. So right there. So it does give you some leeway if you if you say if you have a 36 week. I don't know if all states do, but um, if you have a 36 week, it gives you some leeway. Now, I'm going to say that I did start out using it exactly as it was written, but and I actually we didn't even check everything off. I see now. But what I started noticing with my kids is that um, my children are very, very active learners. So they are not good with sitting for 45 minutes to an hour to do an assignment. Um, I, I will usually have their attention, say like the first 15 minutes of an assignment, and then it just kind of starts waning. And I did notice that with my daughter when we were trying to go with, you know, doing all the modules that it said, like for example, there's four modules to do this day, and three modules to do this day, and so on. It, it was really starting to bog her down, and she was really losing her excitement for the for for the project for the assignment. So what I actually started doing towards the end was we started just working on one module a day. That's it. Um, and actually, yeah, not not module. I think I'm talking about the sections in the module. Yeah, because the module is filled up with sections. So I don't mean modules. I I, I was referring to sections. But anyway. So we're only doing one section a day now because that is what works best for my kids. You know, you have to do what works best for, for your own children, right? So again, I'm not going to go through the entire thing because we would be here for the next five hours because there's just so much to look at. So this is the, oh, and it gives you a, a, your, your kids a rubric. Oh, and it... It has little vocabulary words for them to look at in case they don't know what they are. It shows you at the beginning of the unit, you know, what you what you need to plan ahead for. For example, in unit one, you need to visit the library. You need to take a field trip. Well, you need to at least try to take a field trip to a nature center or a nature center. I cannot talk. A wildlife preserve, a zoo, something along those lines. So it just lets you know ahead of time, hey, try to get this scheduled. So, right here, this is the Into the Wild one, and it just, this one, actually, the very first assignment is a question and answer format report, which I also, I, I'm grateful that it was something like that, because I think that a question and answer format is a little bit um, of a nicer transition for a child who's not really used to a writing curriculum. So, anyway, so... It just it just tells you what you're going to need. You needed a, a notebook, and it, it 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 really goes over everything. Like it explains that you need to keep your notebook in a in a safe place and always know where it is. And it tells you different sorts of things you can you can use for your notebook. And it tells you where to get your information. Which I do have to say, I was talking earlier about using websites. And I hope I can find it. There is somewhere in the teacher's manual in the beginning, and it actually shows you safe search engines for children. Um, and I really, there we go, guidelines for, ki for teaching kids to use the Internet safely. So that's on page 33 of the teacher's manual. And, yeah, right here, kid-friendly search engines. And I really, really appreciated that because... I'm going to be honest, again, I did not even know that these three search engines existed. So you can bet that I'm definitely going to be using this. And it actually tells you recommended internet filters over here. So again, the teacher's manual is something that is really, really valuable. Because even if you do not follow the schedule exactly as it says, 
you know, besides having the answers in here, it has so many different resources in here. And it tells you know about Wikipedia and about how to use it properly and whether or not you should use it. But again, I'm going off on a tangent here because I was doing the other book and now I'm in the teacher's manual. But I just wanted to point that out that this is a really great resource to have. Um, now, most of you who have subscribed to my channel know that I'm not a big teacher's manual person. A lot of times I, I think that they add a lot of busy work to the schedule, but in this case, by all means, get the teacher's manual, use the teacher's manual. You do not have to use the, the schedule exactly as it says, but besides having the answers, again, it's just a wealth of information that you as the parent might not even know. So definitely a good, a good resource to have on hand. Okay, so anyway, so going back to that, um, it just literally shows you step-by-step step how to do this report. It, there were, it, it took several days before she actually started working on her actual report, but it was valuable information and it was just, again, giving them practice and looking things up on the internet, finding reliable resources, um, knowing where to look for things, knowing what keywords to use, those sorts of things. So there we go. So there's all of that. And I'm just going to page through the rest of this because, again, we have not been using this that long. So that's why I said I'm just going to give you a glimpse into it because we have not finished it, not even by a long shot. I just wanted to show you that there is so much good stuff in here. Like right here, what is not plagiarism? What is plagiarism? It goes over those sorts of things and it explains it in a way that your kids will understand. Um, and here it still goes over, you know, the parts of speech. So even if your child did not do volume one, they are still going to be getting the parts of speech and that grammar aspect in this curriculum. So at first, I actually thought that this was just going to be writing, you know, like compositions. But I was, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that no, there's actually... Um, it, it does go over the parts of speech and it goes over a little bit of the more advanced parts of speech that, that the kids who are a bit younger haven't learned about yet. So see, um, now that's not exactly advanced parts of speech, but it's showing you how you can write different sentences, the different types of sentences. It has poetry, as you can, as you can tell. I've seen that it, it was going over the iambic pentameter in here. Um, also, there's a checklist for, for each module, too, that your child checks off everything that they've done, and then there's little points that they can earn. But let's just page through this because, again, this is something that I have not gotten all the way through yet. Oh, and I another thing that I really like, I have to add this in. As I was looking through it, I saw that they also read part of The Hobbit. <laughs> and I am a big Lord of the Rings and Hobbit fan. So when I saw that, I was like, woohoo! So anyway, so right now, all I'm doing is just paging through to give you an idea of what this looks like. But now I am going to tell you that since we are not going through it as the schedule says, this is going to take us more than a year to finish. And I'm okay with that. Because even though my daughter will be 14 and will technically be high school age next year, and this is, you know, for fourth through eighth grade, I am not someone who goes by grade levels. Um, I just do what I think will meet their needs the best at the time. And since she has never done a writing curriculum, um, this is actually the perfect place for, for her to start. So I am perfectly fine, even if it takes us, you know, two, two years to get through this, two and a half years. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that because I would rather have this curriculum take longer for her to finish than to rush her through it and for her to end up not enjoying writing because I was pushing too much pressure onto her. You understand what I'm saying? So anyway, as you can see, I'm just paging through. I hope that you're able to see this. Um, there's Poetry Jam. Let's actually go back to the table of contents because that will probably give you a better idea. Okay, so 
I'm just going to go over the different units. So again, Into the Wild is the one with the animals. Introduction 2 is Making the Case. And some of the things that it shows you that they're doing are um, gathering data, analyzing results, preliminary ideas, interviewing people. Um, there's also questions that, that they ask each child that, that will um, coincide with the, with the assignment for, for that unit or for that module. And as you can see here, in the poetry unit, I think I just moved the camera, in the poetry unit, we've got acrostic poems, lyric poems, haiku, cinquain, I'm not even sure if I said that right, isn't that terrible? Um, but yes, so over here we have metaphor and, and simile. Um, we've got allusion. Um, we've got connotations. So, and then up here we have pronouns and poetry, possessive pronoun or possessive adjectives. So really, this curriculum covers so much. And you know what? I've really got to say that I am so, so glad that we were able to get the opportunity to, to use this curriculum because I'm going to say it again. I am not a big formal textbook kind of homeschool mom. Um, we usually tend to shy away from this stuff. But in this case, I think this is really going to help her to get through her, her high school years and, and be prepared for college if she chooses to go. Um, because right now, you know, she, she really likes engineering type things. So if she's going to take that route, then yes, she's going to need college. And this is something that's a little bit more structured than notebooking. So anyway, if you have any questions about writers and residents, leave a comment. Or if you have used volume one and can leave some comments about what that is like. I would love that because you would probably really help a lot of people out. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to see more, I would love if you would do that. And I hope you have a good day.